I want to get right into the Word of God in the book of Galatians. Galatians, my assignment today is to talk on the subject, we are God's children. We are all God's children dealing with the subject of adoption. Let's look, if you would, at Galatians chapter number 4. Galatians chapter number 4, beginning at verse number 1. Galatians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1, the Word of God says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. It says in verse 5 again, to redeem those. That word redeem is very important. To redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons... God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Verse 7 again says, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but you are a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. One other verse I'd like to read into your hearing is uh, Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 19. The Word of God says in Romans 8 and 19, For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. The earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing, for the manifestation of the sons of God of God. Today, as we deal with this subject of adoption, I'd like to use as a subtopic today, from slavery to sonship. From slavery to sonship. You know, it was amazing to me, uh, even as I left here on uh, yesterday, I, I put the address of the hotel, I put it into our GPS and and, and it took me directly to the, air, uh, directly to, uh, the, the hotel. And, and then later that day, I put the same address into the GPS once again, and it brought me to the hotel, but it took me on a different route. That, 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 that always amazes me. It really does. I'm never ceased to amaze how it is that, that you can take all of these different roads but they will ultimately lead you to the same place. This is even true, even when, when you consider uh, how, how all of us uh, landed in, in this great and awesome country in which we live. I, I know that right now America has a lot going on, but the fact of the matter is America is still the greatest country in the world. I thought I'd get somebody to say amen to that. Amen. I, I, I bless God for, for this United States of America. And when, when you consider, when you consider this place called America and how it is that, that all of us got here, it's amazing that we've taken different avenues, but it led us all to the same place. Come on, think about it for a minute. M m most of us, many of us in here today, our descendants voluntarily came to America looking to improve their lives as immigrants. But the fact of the matter is, for us African Americans, our ancestors, they were brought to this country as slaves. But, but it really doesn't matter how we got here. Dr. King said that we may have arrived on different ships, but the truth of the matter is we're all still in the same boat. Amen. So, so, so how we got here is, is really not that important. You know, Bishop McClendon said something last night that really blessed my life when he said that, that Jesus Christ, he is, he is the great 
equalizer. And because Jesus is the person of grace, I like to say that grace is the great equalizer. Because think about it for a moment. As believers, when you look at us as believers, yes, we, we, may be, we may be different in statue, may be different in our economic statue, may be different in, in, in our, our race, our colors, all of that may differ, but the fact of the matter is, is that we have more in common than we think. Hell yeah, well, you know, you look around and you see all of the differences. You see how we look, how we act, how we praise. Yes, we are different, but we, we, are, we, are, we are people with more in common than we really understand, especially when you, you consider how it is that, that we became a part of this tremendous family of God. The Bible says it like this in John's Gospel, chapter number 1, verse number 12, but as many as received him, to them, he gave the right, the power to become the children of God. The fact of the matter is none of us, none of us just woke up and became children of God. Yes, we are all God's creation, but in order for us to get into this family, all of us at some point had to receive Jesus and had to believe on his name. Stay, stay with me. Stay with me for a moment. See, see when you consider, when you consider how, how we got to this family uh, room of God, how, how we made it to, to this, this, this awesome place of, 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 of family, this, this, this tremendous family room of God, I, I, I believe that even though our journeys to America may have been different, all of our journeys to this family room, it all began in the same place. And it all began in the slave market of legalism. Amen. And because it began in the slave market of legalism, it, it, it ultimately put us in a position where we were slaves to sin. In other words, y'all, in order for us to be a part of this awesome family of God, and the fact of the matter is we are family. Oh, no, come on, look at your brother, look at your sister and tell them we are family. Oh, yeah, we, we, we may look a little different, but we are family. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, all of us. Can somebody say all of us? Come on, y'all. Say it strong. Say all of us. All of us, in order to get in this family, we had to travel from slavery to sonship. Every single one of us. Every single one of us had to travel from, from this slave market of legalism to this, this place of divine sonship. Look at it right here in Galatians chapter number 4. Look, look, look at what the Word of God says in, in Galatians 4 and, and verse number 4. The Bible says, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. According, according to this text, according to the word of God here, the Bible says that, 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 that it, when, when, when God got ready, he released Jesus, and, and, and he allowed Jesus to come and to redeem us to redeem those of us who were slaves to legalism, who were, who were slaves to sin, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Man, that, 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 word, that word redeem is a powerful word. That, that word redeem is, is, is a very significant word. As a matter of fact, do, do me a favor and let's look at 1 Peter. Let's look at 1 Peter. See, see, see because, because all of us, in order to get in this blessed family, in order, in order to be considered children of God, and in, in, in order to, to have a right to, to call our, our God, our Heavenly Father, all of us had to travel from, from slavery to, to sonship. Now, now, now look at what 1 Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 18 says. The Word of God says, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but by the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. Come on, y'all. That, that, that word redeemed. 
Look, look at the word redeem because redeem is a powerful word. The, the, the word redeem, redemption, it, it, it actually suggests the price that is paid for the release of someone. That, that word redeem, it's, it, 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 it suggests being purchased out of the slave market. Bishop, Bishop McClendon said last night, redemption is, is to rescue from the loss. I, I know you may have it going on. I, I, I know you may have great positions in, in, in the world, but, but the fact of the matter is all of us started out lost. All of us started out in a place where we needed a Savior. And, 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 and God, because he loved us, because, because he loved us so much, he, 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 allowed, he allowed Jesus to shed his blood in order to redeem us, in order to rescue those of us who were lost. Can somebody say, thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. Now, 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 now when, you, when you study the word, when you study the word, the, the apostle Paul, e even in his attempt to help the Galatians understand this, this whole redemption thing. He, he, he used three different Greek words, all referring to the purchase that is made at a slave market. When Paul, when Paul was, 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 was trying to get the church at Galatia, trying to get them in a place where, where they really understood what, 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 what it meant to be redeemed, what, what this, whole, this whole redemption process was about, he used three different words. And, and, and all three words made reference to the purchase that is made at a slave market. First Greek word he used is the word agorazo, agorazo. The word agorazo, it, it means to purchase in the market. And, and it actually deals with the price that was paid by Jesus, which, which speaks of the value of the believer. In, in other words, in other words, the Bible said it right there in, in, in 1 Peter chapter number 1. The Bible says when you think in terms of, of the price, when you think in terms of our value as believers, when you think in terms of this word agorazo, and you understand that value is determined by what someone is willing to pay for something. Value is not determined just by a, a, a tag that's put on something, but value is determined by the price that someone is willing to pay for something. And God says that we were so valuable that we were not purchased with corruptible things like silver and like gold. We were so valuable that we had to be redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So how can you have low self-esteem? When you know who you are in Christ, when you know what it took to get you into the kingdom of God, baby, you might not like me, but God must have loved me something awful because he was willing to purchase me with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, see, understand, understand. Paul, Paul, Paul used the word agorazo, which, which speaks of our value. Man, man, you know, I, I got this revelation. I was a little kid. I, I, I don't even know where I got the revelation from, but, but, but coming up as a kid, we, we, we didn't have a lot. We, we didn't have a whole lot of money, but, 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 but somehow I, I just knew that, that I was not what everybody called me. I, 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 I was worth more than what people said about me. So, 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 so when I was growing up, we, we, we used to... Um, you, you may not be able to relate to this, but, but we used to uh, save jelly glasses. Yeah, yeah, the glass container that, that jelly came in, my parents would save those and use them as drinking glasses. And, 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 and we had a whole set. Yeah. And see, when you got a set of jelly glasses as your drinking glasses, you are not poor, you are poor. <laughs> but somehow I got the revelation that even though 
I was drinking out of a jelly glass. As a little kid, I would drink with my pinky finger in the air. Hallelujah, because I understood that there was value in my life. And when you begin to understand the value that you have as a believer, as a born-again believer, you will never walk around with low self. I dare you, I dare you to look at somebody and tell them, I got it going on. I, come on, y'all, talk to them. Tell them, I got it going on. And the reason I know I got it going on is because Jesus purchased me with his blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but, but Paul used another word. He used the word agarazo, which means to purchase in the market. But then he also used the word lutruo, L-U-T-R-O-O, which means to purchase and set free. And, 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 and agarazo speaks to our value but, but Latruo speaks to our liberty. Hallelujah. Not only were we purchased by the blood of Jesus, but, but, but we were purchased and we were set free. Hallelujah. Now it makes sense when the word of God says those who the son has set free are free indeed. That's why I can preach with tennis shoes on because the tennis shoes don't determine my anointing. I am free in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. See, see, man, man, when, when, when you begin to understand that, that, that God did not just purchase us with the blood of Jesus, but, but he purchased us and then he set us free. He purchased us and he said, you're no longer in bondage to these rules and, and regulations. You're no longer in bondage to what man thinks about you. The only thing that governs you now is the precious love that your God has for you. And when you begin to live a life in love. Come on, y'all. It's good to be free. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I say it is good to be free. It's good to not have to worry about what you think about me. It's good to not have to worry about what you say about me. Hallelujah. It is good to be free. Hallelujah. See, 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 Agarazzo speaks to our value. Man, you got it going on. You, I, I tell you like this. If you were the only one if you were the only person that was birthed into this earth realm, you are so valuable that Jesus would have still died for you. Hallelujah. But not only, not only are, you, are you valuable, not, not only are we, are we valuable, but, but he uses the word latruo, which speaks to our liberty as believers. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in bondage to a denomination. Hallelujah. I'm not in bondage to man. I love man. I serve man, but I'm not in bondage to man. Because those who the sun sets free, they are free indeed. Not, 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 not. There were three words. There were three words that, that Paul used in his attempt to, to help the Galatians to understand this concept of redemption. He used the word agarazo which means to purchase in the market, which speaks to our value. He used the word latruo, which means to purchase and, and set free, which speaks to our liberty. But then he used the word ek agarazo, which means to purchase, purchase and take home, which, 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 which agarazo speaks to our value. Latruo speaks to our liberty, but ek agarazo speaks to our adoption. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. He could have just purchased us and set us free. He could have just purchased us and say, you valuable, but go ahead on with your valuable self. But the Bible says that, that he used the third word, ek agarazo. He said, not only are you valuable, he said, not only are you free, but he said, I'm going to purchase you and I'm bringing you home with me. I'm going to make you a part of my royal family. Oh, somebody ought to shout glory. Come on, y'all, that ain't shouting this strong. Shout glory. glory. See, see, you got to understand something about adoption. Yeah, I, I, I grew up. I grew up in an area where, where, uh, where there were a lot of unwanted children. That's the reality of it. A lot, lot, a lot of times people would have, have, have children with, without intention. 
and, 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 and some, some would allow those children to be birthed. Others would, would use alternative method, methods. But in all of my years, even though I've seen and experienced individuals with unwanted children, I've never in my life ever heard of an unwanted adoption. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Oh, y'all missed it. See, see you, can, you can say oops and have a child, but, 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 but that, that's not how adoption works. See, when you understand the adoption process, the adoption process, the one doing the adoption, they get the adopting, rather, the one doing the adopting, they get to examine who it is they're adopting. They get to see your good side and your bad side. They, they get to check you out. They, they get to see everything about you. And God says, after examining you, after looking at everything that you've done, don't y'all look at me in that tone of voice, because you ain't always been this holy. And God says, even when you wasn't holy, I still adopted you. I still took you home. Will somebody give God a praise for adoption? <laughs> hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Man, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. And, and, and see, y'all, may, maybe y'all not anything like me. See, because I'm not one of these pastors who have the wonderful testimony that, that, that I came from, from the maternity ward to the pulpit. No, I had a stint in the world. I, I, I did some things that I wasn't proud of. I, I, I've been some places that, that I wouldn't tell some of y'all about. I, I, I got some, some stuff in, in my closet that, that I really don't want anybody to know about. But the thing that I love is that while people try to judge me on speculation, God adopted me with all of the evidence. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, hi, anybody glad to be adopted? Anybody glad to be in the family of the living God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is good news. That shouting material, that, that's something that'll make me want to dance when there ain't no music being played. That's, that's something that make me want to run when there ain't nobody behind me. That he adopted me when he knew everything about me. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I'm supposed to be teaching this morning, huh? Let me, let me settle back down, if you would. Uh, see, now, let me hurry up. See, we got to understand that, that Paul used these three words in, in order to help us to understand the, the wonderful blessing that we have in being a part of God's family. Not, 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 not only... Are we valuable? Not only are we free, but, but we have been adopted. And he didn't adopt us because we were so perfect. He adopted us in spite of everything that he knew about us. Somebody just give him a wave offering and say, thank you, Jesus. Now, 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 now let, me, let me share this with you because... The Bible doesn't just say that we were adopted. Hear me today. Because the Word of God, it, 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 it actually says that we receive the adoption as sons. We receive the adoption as sons. Not, 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 not as children, but as sons. Now, now when you study that out, you'll find out that this word son, in the Greek, it, 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 it speaks to those who are grown up to maturity. It says we have been adopted, but we have been adopted as, as sons. In other words, family, God, through his awesome grace, what he has done for every single one of us is he has moved us uh, who, who, who believe in Jesus. He's, he's moved us into his family room, but he has given all of us a call to mature sonship. He didn't just put us in here, but he has called us to mature sonship. And, 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 and as awesome as this position is, it comes with tremendous responsibility. 
Because the Bible says in Romans 8 and 19 that creation is, 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 is grown and creation is, is, is they, they, they are waiting for, for the revealing of not the children of God, but, but creation is, 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 is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, the mature believers. Listen to me, family. America, this world, it needs to see at this point what the real church of Jesus Christ looks like. Come on, y'all need to clap better than that. See, that's why, that's why this Grace Conference is so significant. Because America, that this world, it, it needs to see what, what the real church of Jesus Christ looks like. And, 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 and the only way that, that, that we're going to see that is, is as the mature sons of God begin to take their place. Now, now, now understand something. Maturity is not necessarily what you think. Because we tend to think that maturity is about how long you've been in church. We tend to think that maturity is connected to, 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 to how well you can, you can, you can quote Scripture. We, we tend to think that, that maturity is connected to the position that, that you hold in the church. But the truth of the matter is, in Hebrews chapter 5, in verse 13, the Word of God says, For everyone, listen church, who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Oh Lord, have mercy. I'm going to read that again. Hebrews 5 and 13, it says, For everyone, somebody shout everyone. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. And he says, if you are unskilled in the word of righteousness, then you are a babe. In other words, maturity is identified not by your position, but maturity is identified by your understanding and your application of the word of righteousness. In other words, maturity is, is, is identified by, by, by your ability to understand and apply this message of grace. See, see anybody who's unskilled in the message of grace, they babies. They spiritual babies. If, if, if you think that, that you, are, you are in good relationship with God because of what you do, you a baby. If you think that you get, you get points with God because of your goodness, you are a baby. But when you understand that if it had not been for the unearned, the unmerited favor of God that has been displayed in my life because of the finished works of Jesus Christ, when you understand that and you live that out, then you are a mature Christian. And that's what the world needs to see at this point. Come on, y'all. That's why some of our churches are so messed up. Because, because we got spiritual babies pastoring people. We got, we got spiritual babies teaching people that, that it's all about your works. It's all about your efforts. And we put Jesus on the back burner. And that's why this message of grace has to be preached. Because when grace is preached, Jesus comes off the back burner. He comes in the forefront of our Christian experience. And that's when you'll see change in the church and in this world that we're living in. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to close. Hallelujah. You know, in the Baptist church, I get three of those. <laughs> at least three. Now, I teach grace, but I'm still Baptist, so I get, that, I, I get at least three closes. Close number one. The Bible says, y'all, that, that creation... Creation is waiting. Creation is waiting for what? For the manifestation, the revealing of the sons of God, the mature men and women of God, the people who, whose lives reflect the truth of God's grace. Because you know what I found out? 
about people who really understand grace? You know what I found out about people who, who, really, who really live out grace? I've discovered, Bishop, that, that recipients of grace are usually distributors of grace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When, when, when you understand that, that you are a recipient of grace, when you understand that, that I, have, I don't deserve any of the wonderful things God does in my life, when you understand that you are a recipient of grace, now you become a distributor of grace. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. No, 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 no. Come on, y'all. Think about it for a minute. Think about it for a minute. When, when, when you are a Recipient of grace, recipients of grace, they're, they're usually distribu distributors of grace. Why is that so? Because as, as recipients of grace, we understand that the grace that we enjoy, it was motivated by the unconditional love of God. Unconditional. I don't know whether or not y'all realize it, but, but, but we are people who are loved unconditionally. Uh, God knows everything about me and he still loves me. He, he knows, he knows when I'm, when I'm worshiping like I should, when I'm living like I should, but he also knows when my wife and I have an argument and I say something to her that I should not have said. But he says, in spite of all of that, I still love you. Hallelujah. Might not like your actions, but I still love you. And, and when you are truly a recipient of that type of love, the Word of God says in, in 1 John 4 and 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No matter Oh, you, it don't matter whether you're purple, whether you're red, whether you're blue, green, whether you're from Mars, whether you're from Texas, hallelujah, no matter where you're from, I love you, hallelujah. I, I, can't, I can't do nothing but love you because, because if God can love somebody like me, how can I not love you? Because you're different from me, hallelujah. See, see, when you are a recipient of grace, when you know how God loves you. See, our problem is we got short memories. We got short memories. We, we, we forget about the stuff God had to look over in order to love us. But when you know what God had to do to love you, how can you not love somebody else? I, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you to look at somebody next to you and tell them I love you and ain't nothing you can do to make me stop. Come on, some of y'all said that like you ain't believe it. Tell them like you mean it. I love you, and there ain't nothing you can do to make me stop. Talk about me, I'ma still love you. Hallelujah. Lie on me, I'ma still love you. Crucify me, I'ma still love you. Because that's the way, that's the way he loved me. See, 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 recip re recipients of grace are usually, are usually distributors of grace because recipients of grace, we understand that, that grace has made provisions. Oh, Lord, I'm going to try to say this without, without shouting and running around this church. Grace has made provisions for all of our sins to be forgiven. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, oh come on, y'all. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. The fact that you're looking at me like that might be one of the sins that need to be forgiven. Grace has made provision for all of our sins. Hallelujah. To be forgiven. And look at what the Bible says. The Word of God says, Ephesians 4 and 32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ, even as God in Christ forgave you. That, that's why, that's why this woman of God, she blessed me yesterday. Sister Elise, God bless you, woman of God. She blessed me yesterday so tremendously. But, 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 but you don't need, hallelujah. You don't need, you ain't got to repent of nothing. I would repent for what? I understand how much God has forgiven me of. 
And if God has forgiven me of all that he had to forgive me of, baby, how in the world can I hold anything against anybody? I love you and don't hold you accountable for anything that has been done in your past. Hallelujah. And, and, and not only, not only did, did grace not only did grace make it possible for all of our sins to be forgiven, but grace gave me the power to live above sin. Because of grace, I don't even have to sin no more. The Bible says, Romans 6 and 14, that sin no longer has dominion over me because I'm not under law. We're under grace. Amen. See, recipients of grace are usually distributors of grace because we understand that grace is ours because of the unconditional love of God. Grace has made it possible for all, hallelujah, all of our sins to be forgiven. Past sins, present sins, future sins, they're all forgiven. And because God has forgiven us like that, how can we not forgive each other? See, as recipients of grace, and I'm done, we understand that the same blood, everybody say the same blood. Come on, y'all, say the same blood. We understand that the same blood that, that was shed by Jesus to make us righteous, if that blood was powerful enough, no, 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 let me rephrase that. Since that blood was powerful enough to cleanse me, then that same blood is powerful enough to cleanse anyone else who's willing to put their faith in Jesus. And not only is it powerful enough to cleanse them, but it's powerful enough to bring them, as it has done all of us, from slavery to sonship. So now all of us have the blessed privilege of being God's children in God's family. No big eyes, little you but we're all one under the banner of heaven. Can somebody give God a praise? I'm done. Hallelujah, I'm done.